Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and this is the Champion of Night and Flame build. This is something that I put to the side that I really wanted to do. I wanted to use the Night and Flame build on my mage character to do massive damage. This is day nine of our build a day until DLC is announced. So hop on board, definitely hit that subscribe button if you wanna see a build every day until they announce DLC. We're gonna see how far we can go with this. In the meantime, we're covering the Sword of Night and Flame. We're gonna to try to get a lot of damage out of it and come up with a ridiculous build that does a lot of damage, has a lot of power, and is really convenient to use for pretty much all the bosses in Elden Ring. So, cool build ideas aside, though I do like the idea of calling a champion, I really like the Sword of Night and Flame. So at launch, it was obviously S tier. And then after so many nerfs, or just a big nerf, I forget whether it was one or several, it really dropped to C or a D status. Now, since you can aim the beam, and the damage has since been increased, it is now up again in the A and maybe even S tier. If you want to throw in fun in there, because this weapon really is an absolute blast to use, it probably makes it into the S category, but for your pure damage, I would put it into an A, which is still fantastic given the fact that it literally was nerfed to oblivion. Patch 1.07 sort of brought it back. I did a review a while back on it, but it wasn't so much as a total build. I wanted to do one with a little bit higher level of a character in my mage that's around 200, where we can focus on both the beam and the fire and come up with a lot of damage for both the faith and magic parts of this weapon. Now, for those aren't, who aren't familiar, I'm going to show you where to get the Sword of Night Flame here in a short bit. The beam scales purely with INT, or intelligence stat, and then the faith stat is for the fire part of it. Now, this is in, I think it's called Carrier Manor, and it's in Lyurnia of the Lakes. When you get to the part with the pillars, you're going to go up and you're going to make your first left. When you get to the, I think, the second pillar from where you're standing, you're going to make a left and then you're gonna go around here and eventually there's gonna be a drop down. I'll show you on the map at the end where this is. You can see me looking for it here, but as we move forward, you're gonna drop down, see that lower platform on the left now, and that's gonna eventually get us to a room that has the Sword of Night and Flame in it. So as we drop down here, we're eventually gonna grab one of the legendary weapons in the game in the Sword of Night and Flame. And the Sword of Night and Flame is really unique in the fact that it's one of the best things that you could do with both intelligence and faith in Elden Ring. And let's be real here, intelligence faith builds are a little bit lacking in Elden Ring. We all hope that when DLC comes, there's a little bit more to it down the line. But for the Sword of Night and Flame itself, it makes very good use of both magic and the fire damage from the faith stat, and both can be utilized to do a ton of damage in Elden Ring. And we're on New Game Plus 7 here, Journey 10, and the damage is still quite good. Now, I wanted to quickly show this fight with this dog. This dog isn't challenging. It just got stuck in a corner, and I don't know. I felt like that just made a good point of putting this in this video. I don't know if this ever happened to anybody. Fought this dog a lot. Never had it get stuck in the corner. That was kind of interesting. But even as you can see there, the beam works fantastically. We're going to show you how to buff that too, because it's a little different with Terra Magica. And then, obviously, the fire part can absolutely wreck tree avatars because they're weak to fire. It's fantastic against them. If you're having trouble at all, fire is always the source of what you should be using against them. And as you can see, even on the max scaling of the game, where some of these guys have a little bit more HP, he goes down in just two casts of the fire part of the Sword Knight and Flame. So it's pretty awesome to see that. And then here we're gonna cast Ma Terra Magica because we're gonna be using the beam and Terra Magica will boost that beam by 35%. Also, making a note real quick, if you're not subbed and you love overpowered PvE builds, definitely sub to this channel. Check out all the awesome builds that are on there. You're not going to want to miss out, and we're doing a build a day until they announce DLC. We're going to see how far we can go with this. Hopefully, we can go pretty far, do as many as we can, and show the versatility that Elden Ring has, because it truly has a ton of versatility. So definitely hit that subscribe button. This isn't bad at all on mobs either. It works perfectly fine against them, and you're going to be able to do a lot of damage to general mobs simply by the fact that if you're behind them or they're in groups, the fire does a lot of damage. And then if you're at a decent range, kind of like a mid-range, then obviously you're going to use the beam, which does a ridiculous amount of damage on its own. And both weapon arts are boosted by the Shard of Alexander and the Ritual Swords Talisman. We're going to go over a setup in a little bit, but you're going to see how the setup generically boosts pretty much both weapon arts, which is really awesome, and it's a good way to use this build and use everything that the Sword of Night and Flame has to offer to the best of its ability. 
For NPC invaders, it's just okay. It lands somewhere in the vicinity of being just all right, simply for the fact that it is a little bit hard to land. It has long wind-up times. However, if you do hit with the beam, you'll knock them down, and the fire does pretty good damage. But again, the hyper armor is kind of like mid-range, mid-tier. It's, it's decent. It's not fantastic. Overall, as far as NPC invaders go, this isn't the best weapon for them, but you can absolutely dispose of them if you know how to use the weapon art and you can time it right. It's not too, too bad there. So after using the beam on Mog a couple times, I missed the beginning of the clip here. We're going to show the second phase of the fight, which is the more exciting phase if you get to it. Now, obviously, if you're running a bleed build or something, you may not have to at all get to the second phase. But in this instance, the second phase did happen. He had a fairly decent amount of HP. But let's show off how the Sword Knight and Flame does against a tough opponent in battle. So against Mog, we're mainly going to be focusing on the beam because he has really good fire resistance. Now, aiming the beam, initially we use Terra Magica for that boost, but once you're moving around in battle, you're probably not going to be throwing out Terra Magica that much. So just concentrate on using the beam and staying at sort of like a mid-range, and you can actually do a lot of damage. This works quite well. Even against Mog, again, who is second phase is actually quite a tough opponent, we're still able to do a lot of damage get in hits when we need to, and end up destroying him in the end with the Night Beam, which is absolutely awesome, and it did do a fairly good amount of damage as well. That fight pretty much went exactly as, as planned, aside from the fact that obviously he got to his second phase, but it took more, no more than a couple of tries, and he went down very easily with the Beam. You just have to learn how to time it right, because it's a little slow to cast both the things for the Sword of Night and Flame, with the beam, though, with the mid-range, the amount of damage it does, it really is fantastic. So for buffs, we're drinking our tier, which has the fire and magic tier in it. A great combo for both of those. And then we're going to use Golden Vow, and then we're going to use Hala Shabriri to generically boost both by 25%, both weapon arts. And then if you're using the beam, go to Terra Magica. If you're using the fire part of it, you don't have to worry about Terra Magica because it's not going to boost that. For equipment, we have the Sword of Night and Flame plus 10. Any seal will do. We have Lucette's Staff because we have high INT. We're using the Sanguine Noble Robe. No boost there, but it is cool looking. Dragon Crest Great Shield. Ritual Swords, Talisman, and Shard of Alexander generically boost both. Magic Scorpion to boost the beam. And then we have the Fire tier along with the Magic tier to also boost both. Quick note, by the way, the Spellblade set is not great as far as resistances go, and it's not a great-looking armor set, but it will boost the beam, just the beam part of it, by 8%, so keep that in mind. As far as stats go, we went for 80 Intelligence to hard cap the power of that beam, which is really powerful, and then for 60 Faith to get a lot of damage out of the fire part of it, and I really liked where the stats ended up here. It ended up working out fantastically at around 200. You can do this at 150 if you pick the beam or the fire, or you go lower stats, maybe something like 60-40 and move some other stats around. But I wanted to do this on a level 200 character for those that love PvE, because this is one of those builds that just gets more powerful as you continue to level up past the metal levels. And I know you can say that for a lot of builds, but a lot of builds also only have one main stat. And the thing about the Sword of Night and Flame is it kind of sort of has four. I mean, if you want to actually get any hits with the actual sword in, you'd have to put some stuff into Dex and Strength too. If you're just using the weapon art, then it's down to two. But even so, it never really has one unless you're content just using the beam and only the beam, which for me, I find that a little bit boring. I'd rather be able to use both, plus the damage the fire does to zero fire resistant enemies and bosses, along with the fact that it destroys pretty much all the tree avatars in the game, is a fantastic bonus that kind of adds on to how awesome the Sword of Night and Flame is again. It's really, truly one of my favorite weapons in Elden Ring, still is, and it's awesome that they brought it back and it can do reasonable damage, actually quite good damage, on New Game Plus 7. And I don't even normally do titles and stuff like that, but I just threw in the champion thing there because I, I really do like the Sword of Night and Flame. It's so much fun to use. It's still one of the most fun weapons that you can use in Elden Ring. It's obviously something that you could do a little bit different from a lot of the common bleed builds and such. You can go with this weapon and you can get a lot out of both weapon arts. Speaking of which, there is one little note that I wanted to add because it's something that I didn't notice until I used the Sword of Night and Flame more. But do keep in mind, when you're in the Night and Flame stance, 
you will not regenerate stamina. You have to let off and then hit. I'm on Xbox. For me, it would be L2 again once your stamina regenerates. It won't regenerate in the stance as far as I know. So keep that in mind if you're wondering why you're fighting, while your sna why your stamina isn't going up. It's because while you're in that stance, it'll just stay where it is. I hope this was a good one and helps you have fun with the Sword of Night and Flame, have a blast with it, and come up with an awesome build that utilizes everything to the best of its ability. By the way, if you want to remove Dragon Crest, you can throw the Fire Scorpion Charm to increase the fire part of it, but do keep in mind you'll be taking 24% more damage in total with the Magic Scorpion Charm. That's why I went for Dragon Crest instead there. It seemed more logical. Anyways... I hope this video was very, very helpful to those who love the Sword of Night and Flame. And we're doing a build a day until they announce DLC, so let's keep this pumped up. Let's see how far we can go with this. If you love overpowered PvE builds, definitely check out all the awesome builds on my channel. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you guys there.